This is a review I've wanted to do for a really long time and cutting to the quick, the first thing to say about the M33 is it's lovely made with these eight cooling grid portholes in the top. You get a machine case and there's this proud front faceplate with a touchscreen panel built in plus with a nice weighted volume dial. But the beating or burning heart of this amplifier is the purified designed Eigentakt Class D amplifiers that it uses that's been designed by Bruno Putzies and Co. 200 watts into eight ohms. So the M33 is built around the Blue OS platform, that's the app that Blue Sound devices use. And you can use a network attached storage drive and index your music in Blue OS and pretty much any streaming service you desire. You can operate this M33 over Wi-Fi or wired network connection via Blue OS. Use the lovely touchscreen which is nice and fluid like the M10 I reviewed. Apple-esque really, really swooshy. <laughs> And you can also use the Blue Sound remote control. But look at this remote, it really says, Look at me, I'm in control. But one thing I really like with this display is it's huge, I mean, really big. And my eyes would have to deteriorate five times more to miss it because it's about as easy to spot as a Banksy artwork on a building. So say you're playing Rune Radio, which is Rune's smart music picking functionality. You don't have to unlock your iPad, go for all that palaver just to find out what's playing because it's right back at you on a huge screen. So as well as Rune, this is a Rune Ready streamer. It's got AirPlay 2 and the Aptex HD Bluetooth is like the Blue Sound Node 2021 because there's receiver and transmitter functionality, but you also get Tidal Connect and Spotify Connect, so that's sending music to your M33 from those relative apps. And it's also fully MQA capable, which is common to lots of Blue Sound devices. If you look at the back you'll notice many speaker outputs but they are actually wired in parallel for bi-wiring speakers not quite sure about that because who buy wire speakers nowadays but they're not dual speaker outputs it's important to say you might think why would you use pre-out too on an amplifier of this class making the m33 a preamp and using it with another amplifier but this is more, I think, using bridge mode and exploiting the M33 as a mono amp with another amplifier. Maybe you could use NAD's new M23 amp, which has exactly the same output power as the M33. You'll get a whopper whoppering 700 watts at eight ohms. Wow. You'll notice that you get two subwoofer outputs and that's because the M33 is Dirac capable you get left and right subwoofer channels in Dirac. The modular design construction or MDC ports are common to NAD amplifiers and are for adding optional cards to get greater connectivity. For the M33, you get a USB DSD card, which is useful because the M33 doesn't have a USB 2 input, 
probably because it's streamed up to the hilt with so much streaming functionality, but you can also get an HDMI module called the HDM2, which is for adding lots of AV HDMI sources to enjoy two channel home cinema through your amp. So with this amplifier, the analog inputs to this amp, that's balanced XLR, line-in RCA, and phono inputs, all digitize the analog. So AD or analog to digital conversion is going on. This is before the digital signal goes into the M33's ESS9028 DAC. And this is all because DIRAC is in the digital domain. I know some reviews have said that the input is only digitized on the phono connections but it's actually all of them and i think it's important to say that i wouldn't be thinking well i don't like digital sound or i don't like digital amplifiers if that could ever exist because this amp and i'll come on to the sonic character in a minute is just not like that it's not a digital sounding amplifier what's rather odd is that when i fed the m33 acutist and an Aries 2 DAC. Both of these DACs house sound was apparent, which is sometimes not the case when you input the analog output of a DAC back into an AD converter. But in an email chat I had with Bruno Putzies, he explained to me that theoretically, the sonic signatures of analog components in a signal chain just add up. That's obviously assuming inaudible distortion. So in this kind of sense, adding DACs with the M33 can be an upgrade. And that is certainly my real world experience. You can actually set up different appearances for different inputs and name those inputs as well. And I love that aspect of this amplifier as well as being able to show off a simulated VU meter. What do they say? Small things please small minds. And that's certainly true with me here. But I also like the digital VU meter you can use. You can have it showing basic text or more involved album artwork. And it's a nice high resolution display. It's not grainy. It looks like you're looking into an iPad or an iPhone. acid test the acid test sound quality and starting off without Dirac not calibrating Dirac the first thing to say is that the M33 gives no clues it's class D and I've tried class D types like Hypex Encore Pascal modules and amps like Cyrus's one cast admittedly that's around the grand price point and it can't really com be compared because it's this M33 is in a different territory. And you might be thinking on this point about Class D, Simon, that's just reviewer BS. But I can assure you, it isn't. It really isn't. Try it. So this amp is much more refined to the original M10 I found. It's got a nice, delicately nuanced approach to its mid-range and a softness in tone that again, this isn't normally class D and there is this very slight tracing too of treble outlines which is natural and the bass dynamics, general dynamics, not the aircraft, and soundstage 
are more than what you'd expect at this cache. Also, Class D has good damping factor traditionally. Control of the starting and the stopping of the drivers, the intonation of the movement of the drivers. And this amp is no different there. I've actually made this analogy before, but the M33 states a case for super integrated amps, meaning that you don't necessarily, and I use the word necessarily advisorily, need to have pre and power boxes anymore. You know, bread used to be delivered in the street with your milk, with a boy cycling on over the cobbles on his bike. You now just go to your supermarket or grocery store and get them together. This is a hi-fi video, not a Hovis advert, but God damn this amplifier sounds good. I swap back and forth more times than is healthy for the binding posts of amplifiers, but against the Hagel H390, the NAD M33 doesn't quite hold a candle to it for all out dynamic bass attack and depth, mid bass projection and width wave soundstage mass. I think that the M33 takes soundstage forwards and backwards slightly over the Hagel's width wave sound albeit that the Hegel is more dramatic when you make this comparison, but it presents treble in a slightly more traced out fashion to the Hegel. It was still natural, but I tried Joan Byers's Diamonds and Rust, pretty old school stuff, but it showed off really what the lovely twangy guitar strings sound like with the NAD, which is totally bang on, but slightly without the richness in the vocal of the Hegel with Joan Byers's voice. So it was actually the same when I swapped out my PMCs for Kef's LS50 Metas, another test speaker I use, a more tonally relaxed speaker, playing a bit of Todd Terrier's album time, the track Johnny and Mary, that song from the Renault adverts, the Palmer track. But it just shows the grip of the Hegel is so apparent in comparison to this NAD M33. In some ways, I think that I'm both analysing small things and it's very close when I'm making these comparisons. But anyway, just as an amp, is the M33 comparable to the Hegel H390 when we're talking only about sound quality as the Hegel does cost about 25% more? The Hegel doesn't really get close in feature set, but things become a little harder to assess on sound quality between these two amplifiers when you set up Dirac. Dirac is probably the most comprehensive of room correction technologies you can get at the moment for hi-fi. Certainly the case when I reviewed the M10. But the sound is something that stands out with Dirac. It's dispersive in your room, very accurate bass, and the full version of Dirac Live does 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz correction. So that's effectively the full audible range. But you have to upgrade from the bog standard 20 hertz to 500 hertz NAD version, I believe. That's the version that you get free kind of in the box. 
Basically, once you do the calibration and load the NAD target curve from the NAD website, you save the calibration to a preset in the M33. But because you can actually turn Dirac on and off, you immediately can hear what it does and what it's all about. So it offers a good review comparison. I tried a bit of Blur's Closet Romantic, that track they did for the train spotting film on the train spotting album, and that repeating organ synth really felt like it's just firing right into my ear hole. It was incredibly realistic. The sound stage is very dispersive with the M33 and Dirac setup, and it's true too that bass is tightened up. There's a big sense of the music coming from the room and not the speakers. And whilst it's not in the dynamic grip territory and depth territory of the Hegel, Dirac undeniably adds these qualities, which I don't think the Hegel can answer to. But for me, purely for the grip and dynamic control and slightly better tone, the Hegel hedges it on sound quality. And these aren't things I'd give up for Dirac, nor does the NAD offer as much control there considering Hegel's brilliant Sound Engine 2 technology. You know, I'd have no problem rating this M33 over the Hegel on sound quality if it were the case. I've no ego in hi-fi and sometimes I get gear that is better than the stuff I own, sometimes the opposite. It's just being a hi-fi reviewer. I think I might actually try and do a second video with another Dirac based product like Mini DSP, which I could actually use with my HV90, just to explore what this software is about and what more things Dirac can bring to the party. I did try the M33 with a calibration and I could explore that more, but I certainly got a feel of what it can bring and what it's all about. And I think it's pretty obvious that it's very good at what it does and what it can achieve for sound quality. I have to think of all tastes when it gets close between two products because reviewing audio isn't just about what I like alone. But if you want all the features, really great streaming integration, room correction technology and fantastic sound, you'd go for the NAD M33, especially at four grand in, in pounds. But if you don't need better streaming integration, you've got a streamer already, you're perfectly happy without Dirac and to get better sound in an amplifier, which the H390 undeniably does, go for it. Room correction technology isn't a prerequisite for good or better sound in hi-fi when you factor in some tastes, because some people want it, others don't. So I think it deserves to be in the subjective melting pot of our preferences. You know, some people say that you have to have room correction technology or a good room acoustics in order for hi-fi to sound so good. But who says just putting good speakers and an amplifier into a room that you're happy with isn't good sound? It's just total nonsense. But coming back to the NAD, the big takeout lesson for me from this review, I think more than anything, is never make hi-fi a test or a decisive view about class AB and class D because at this level, it simply doesn't exist anymore. Thanks for watching.